Thank you very much. I'm excited to be here. You guys all want to be entrepreneurs, huh? Oh, yeah. Let's see. Show of hands. That's why you're here, right? I think you're nuts. <laughs> no, it's a good time. Here's my intent. Here's what I want to do today is take you on a little bit of a journey through history because it's an interesting date today. We'll talk a little bit more about that. Uh, but more than anything, I want you to walk away and leave with you can make a difference individually. Uh, I've, I'm not sure what number of lecture this is that I've given, not only here, but at other universities. And I remember, uh, you know, not too long ago sitting here and oh, I wish I would, you know, things, I wish I would have known that or I wish I would have done that. Hopefully I'll provide a couple of meaningful things that you guys can walk away with. Uh, I usually give my contact information at the end, but you can find me on Twitter at Derek Miner. Uh, you can also reach me via email, the old-fashioned way, or fax. I'll give you a fax number. I'm just kidding. Some people are like, oh my gosh, fax machine? No, I'm not talking faxes. So uh, dminer at orangesoda.com. So I think this is the universal way to say that I'm excited to be here. Okay, maybe not. Maybe some of you guys are Google fans, right? Who's on Google Plus? Right on. The whole social web. Okay, so we have a few things in common. Here's what we're going to talk about. Introduction. We'll do a little introduction. We'll talk about time. I'm going to share a few stories. Talk about the three Ds. Those will be your takeaways. As I've listened to and found, it's really we learn things in three. So if we can keep things in three. I share a lot of things in three sequence. And then above all, taking action. I'll talk about some of the things that you can do, but at the end of the day, it's up to you individually to go on to make something happen. Everyone agree with that? Okay, so we have a few things in common. As, uh, as I was introduced, that I am a, a UVU alum. It was actually, uh, let's see, UVSC when I was here, Utah Valley, the State College, which is great. Fun to see at uh, Turner University. Uh, some of the best advice I ever got in, around studying and learning. So first of all, hats off to all of you for being here and being in school. School is important, and it's been interesting to see across the country uh, uh, enrollment rates declining. But good for you guys being here. It's awesome. Education is critical, and we we consider that especially as we look to hire people as well. Uh, and it's not going away. Yes, there's a lot of people who haven't gone to college, but good for you. There's something really great about collaboration with a team and being together that is extraordinary. Um, so as I was as I was saying, as I was taught. Some of the best advice that I got is teach or learn as though you have to teach the class. And then you'll do really well. Don't just, because I remember I'm like, oh my gosh, it'll be so much better when. Right? When I get my degree, oh, it'll be, I'll have, it'll be so much better when all these tests are done. Guess what? It doesn't get easier. And you'll always be going there. So enjoy every second right now. That's kind of the theme of the presentation. So time for entrepreneurship. So I wanted to share something. Anyone heard about the Red Balloons project that was put on by the uh, US Department of Defense? It's a few years ago. This is one of the coolest collaborative projects I've ever seen. It ties into what we're going to be talking about today. Am I talking too loud? OK. <laughs> we need the microphone down like eight inches, something like that. And I, I tend to not be too quiet. So anyway, as people are listening, I'm like, whoa. Anyway, take your headphones off. Uh, so December 2009. The goal was to use social media to identify the GPS coordinates for 10 balloons suspended at fixed locations across the country. The first two team to do so would win $40,000. Okay, pretty good. 10 red balloons, 4,000 teams entered this competition. 4,000 teams. A lot of competition. And again, the rules are whoever finds the 10 balloons first. So here's what happened. Any ideas what the winning time was? Whoa, that would be pretty cool. These are 10 balloons across the country. We're based in Boston. How would we find across the country? Any ideas? 10 days? Pretty good guess. That would be, you know, one day per balloon, right? Would make sense. Any other guesses? That would take a long time. It would take a long time, wouldn't it? OK, take a step back. What do we all have with us? All right, interesting. So the winning time was actually 8 hours, 52 minutes. Whoa, how did they do it? Well, using social networks and incentives, the team promised $2,000 to the first person 
who submitted the correct coordinates for a single balloon and $1,000 to the person who invited that person to the challenge. Another $500 would go to the person who invited the inviter and so on. Do you see what's at work here? It's the same thing with Kickstarter, right? What do you have? A social platform with the ability to share real locations. Here's what's happening real time. As a marketer, six, seven, eight, 10, 20 years ago, to know that I can understand what my customers' needs are right now, right today, and what their interests are, you would have thought that was everything. Well, we have it, but it's still pretty tricky, pretty difficult, right? So I wanted to show you really quick this. This is, there's no sound, but this is a moving map. If you can see this, watch up in Boston. This is what happens over the time lapse, over the hours where they discover the balloons. Wait for it. <laughs> See that? Those are the messages starting to transmit back and forth. Hours are lapsing up on the top. You can see the time counter. Interesting. There's the balloons. All through what, a social web? Because we're all social people. What do we like to do? Like to share. So what did I start off with at the very beginning? Can we make a difference? Can one person make a difference? Huge difference. All right. So here's another thing we have in common. Is that a clock? What does that mean? We all have time. We all have the same number of hours in a day, we have the same number of days in a week, same number of weeks in a month, same number of months in a year. Everyone agree with that? We all have an opportunity to do something. So timing is what? What do we hear? Timing is, timing is everything. And I think it's pretty interesting that this is the date in which we're talking about this today. 11, 12, 13. Hopefully you'll remember this is a memorable date when you made a decision yourself to make an impact and make a difference. I love Back to the Future. It's one of my favorite movies of all time. There's so many great stories, so many correlations that you can make to whatever you want, really. Um, but we'll talk about this. So if I had a time machine, it'd be fun to go back in time. Who, who can tell me the first form they think of marketing and when it existed? What was the first form of marketing or advertising? Word of mouth. Okay, word of mouth, that's probably true. Right? Sharing something, hey, here's what it is, people dealing one-on-one. -on -one. You know what's so interesting today? Same principle. Isn't that right? How do we share things one-on-one? -on -one, but we have a global platform to do that. Fascinating. All right. So that's what I found in terms of some sort of marketing, right? What, did they, what, what, what message do you think they were trying to send here? I don't know. Yeah, probably a really great steak restaurant or something. We can get some, some good meat. But the problem was, what if I wanted to share that message? Yeah, it's pretty tough. Carve that out of the side of the hill. So then we did what? Scrolls and papyrus, we were able to roll it up and share it. Then what changed everything? What's that machine? The printing press. How did that change things? Mass distribution and speed. Isn't that fascinating? Think about how many years that took, just from there to there. How about that? It'd be great if we could get those words to transmit faster. Morse code. Two. That's a radio for some people who may not. What, what, what is that? <laughs> it's a radio. <laughs> uh, you can actually turn it in, change the dials. It's really kind of cool. Uh, anyway, I can now hear the message. But wouldn't it be even cooler if I could hear it and see it? TVs. So way back in 2006, <laughs> when, uh, when we started Orange Soda, any idea what kind of phone I had? I actually did have a flip phone, but the, the really cool phones that everyone had, razors were really cool, but I was using those to shave with instead. Uh-huh. So the old Palm Trio with a stylus. <laughs> but what's back? Stylus. How interesting how we come full circle. 
That's why I'm talking about this whole story. It's just it, really interesting. So this was, this was 2006. I thought this was so great, and this was cutting edge technology. Yes, it took me three or four minutes to download all of my email and send it. And the web browsing capabilities were very slow, but it was the phone to have. All right, so I thought this was really interesting. I wanted to share this graphic. So what, what difference can eight years make since we're talking about time and time, timing being everything? You want to see one of my, one of my what's that? Yeah. Yeah. Blackberry, it, that's, a whole, that's a whole nother topic for a whole nother discussion anyway, like we were going though. How about this picture? I just want you to look at it and think about it. 2005? 2006. Or 2013. Anyone know what that is? No, it's when the Pope at Vatican City. Where are we going? How are we connected now as people? More so than everyone. Everyone has a phone. Everyone has access to information. Well, there was just a, a report actually released yesterday. If you can see the date, November 2013. Smartphones, mobile PCs, tablets, and mobile routers with cellular connection growing to 5.6 billion globally. There are more smartphones. I heard the statistic. There's more smartphones being activated in outside of the U.S. and like India by the day. It, the number's scary. How fast people are activating their smartphones. It's fascinating. From a marketing perspective, what does this do? Well, huge opportunities, right? So there's two things I think we always say. Any idea what two things are? Oh man, I'm so so awesome. I love that. You are so awesome. You're hearing what I'm saying from the beginning. Two things we always say. So thing one, thing two. I'm glad I did. You ever said that about doing something? I'm glad I did. Or what's the second thing we say? I wish I would have. So what is the opportunity for each of us today? We have a choice to make as we leave this room and say, you know what? I'm glad I did that. Or I wish that I would have. I hope by the end you say, I'm glad that uh, I attended that lecture and I hope that it was meaningful and that you walk away with a few things. So we can talk a little bit more about marketing as well, but this is what I want to talk about, entrepreneurship. In political economics, entrepreneurship is a process of identifying and starting a business venture, sourcing and organizing, right? This is from Wikipedia. It's great to always start something with a definition, but this is my favorite is what he says about Wikipedia. <laughs> Wikipedia is the best thing ever. Anyone can write anything they want about any subject so you know you're getting the best information. So how many of you guys have ideas? How many of you have a little idea book? You write things down. How many of you guys are executing on those ideas? Hands don't need to go up. Awesome. A few hands, a few confidence hands going up saying, I'm making stuff happen. I like that. Because we all have idea books. I've got an idea book by the side of my bed. And when I've got an idea, guess what? I start drawing it out, sketching it, starting to put together a business model. And then I'll come back a couple hours later. I'm like, yeah, it won't work for these reasons. But it's great to get it out. So I had the opportunity to study industrial design, which is effectively the major for inventing. And you have an idea, you, really the, the description is you're solving a problem visually. What's the problem? What are the challenges? So you draw it out and you ideate. One of my professors told me, and I love this, he said, get all the ideas out. There's no bad ideas. Because once you get them out, you can start to correlate and draw and make connections to things together. So go back and look at some of your past ideas because you can really collaborate that way. So if you don't have an idea book, get an idea book. If you're not one for traditional paper, which I get it, we have phones, use your notepad or use Evernote or some other great, there's so many ways to track uh, ideas that you, that you have. So you got, everyone's got ideas, but what about this? The ability to, the ability to execute is really what it's all about. And I love, I love this drawing because it's not just make it happen. Who makes it happen? I do. That's right, you make it happen individually. So I love, I've got beautiful little kids and they are so fun. They don't take no for an answer <laughs> very often. They're so fun to play with. The reason, they build, they explore, they create, they break through and they break stuff and then they build it again. Or their brother breaks something and then there's a whole bunch of tears that are shed. Right, but then they'll go back and we'll try to figure out how to build it again. And isn't it interesting when we're kids, they say, you know, everyone's into art and drawing and exploring and having fun. 
the last time you were at a playground, you saw, well, if someone fell off a slide or something like that, I get that, saw a little kid that wasn't happy playing on a playground or drawing a picture. But the problem is, the older we get, they say, stay in the lines when you draw. Right? I'm inviting you to draw outside the lines and have fun. Remember what it was like to be a kid. They're, they have great time. They have great experience. And I, they ask really good questions. In fact, this was a conversation that I just had with my son a couple of days ago. I, he, came, he goes up to me, he's, he's four, and he says, Hey, Dad, do you know who my favorite person is? I said, Who, bud? He goes, Spider-Man. I'm like, Oh, I thought this was going to be like my moment. <laughs> you know? And he said, but I said, But I thought I was. He goes, Well, you and Spider-Man. So made me feel a little bit better. But they're so funny because they're always, their brains are always going. They're always thinking about things. So I love, anyone who this, Jeff, can you complete his last name? Bezos. Jeff Bezos. Who is he? Zappos. No, he bought Zappos, but he started Amazon. That's right. He is, he's a remarkable entrepreneur. And if you don't follow Amazon, take a look at it. It's pretty interesting to see what they've done. And uh, Zappos is a whole nother story that I can yeah. share. Zappos, no. Don't apologize when you talk about Zappos with me. I'm a shoe guy. I love shoes. I'm fanatical about shoes. Anyone ever ordered from Zappos? You know they're not a shoe company? Nailed it. You hear that? They're a customer service company. They care about the customer. And they put the customer first. That, in a world of commoditized everything, what's the difference? How people feel and how you interact and you can make someone's day. We'll talk a little bit more about that as well. What can you do today? Every day is day one is what uh, Jeff says, and I love that. What does that mean? Well, we're coming up to the infamous new year, right? What do we all do? Well, most of us set New Year's resolutions. And how are we doing two or three weeks in? Oh, can't even remember, right? Because we get so excited. Oh, I'm going to make a difference. I'm going to make it happen. Then what happens? Nothing. Time, isn't that right? Oh, I got so busy with this or that. Here's one of the approaches that I take. I set New Year's resolutions almost all the time. I don't call them New Year's resolutions, but I'm constantly setting goals. Why? Because we as human beings have to have something we're striving towards. We have to have something that we're working towards. So if you're not setting goals right now, that's the number one thing I'm going to say. Okay, when you walk out of here, set some meaningful goals and set them now. Don't wait until the New Year to do it. New Year's is great because the calendar starts over. Hey, I can start fresh, which is awesome. But when you start or you forget after two or three weeks in January, this will get you in a pattern right now. Take me up on that challenge because every day is day one. What does that mean? You're excited. You're enthused coming in. I love talking with our new employees when they come in. And I ask them, why are you here? I ask them a few questions. What do you want to gain out of this experience? And they're so excited. I said, don't lose that excitement. So it's the same thing. No matter where you are in school right now, how can you make today and tomorrow and the next day day one? do it. It's your choice every morning when you wake up to say, you know what, I'm going to make this the best day. I can make this the best day. I love that. So what's the big D? We're going to talk about three D's that no matter what your business is, no matter what you do, uh, no matter what ideas you have that you want to start, let me suggest three D's as you consider your business model and the, uh, and the problems that it may solve. So the first big D, distinguish. Second is the ability to demonstrate. And third, the ability to delight. As I mentioned a minute ago, Zappos is amazing at delighting customers. And that can be the key difference. So what do I mean when I talk about distinguished, being distinguished? It means being loyal, being able to be different, being someone that someone can count on. Having credibility, having a reputation to say, you know what, I can count on that person to do this for me. As a business, even more important to be distinguished. Next thing, the ability to demonstrate. This is critical. Because you can talk about, yeah, these are all of the great things that we're going to do, but at the end of the day, it's all about performance. And how am I doing? And what am I doing? And what have you done? And are we collaboratively working together? And most of all, are we seeing results? Right? So delight. You probably were thinking about this. I'm not talking about Sunny D at all, in fact. 
talking about delight as the definition again. I thought this was great. Delight, an experience guaranteed to delight both young and old. Who has mobile phones now? Young and old. And delighting people and being engaged with people is not something you have to ask permission for. It's something that you can do today to delight and to make someone's day better. I want to share just a quick experience about making someone's day. Uh, one of my favorite stories is actually from, uh, from Zappos and received a ton of news about this. Anyone heard about uh, the famous story about a shoe return? Can I share it with you? Um, customer orders a pair of shoes. They call in and they, they get them, they call back and say, hey, I've got to return the pair of shoes. Naturally, the question is, what was, was there a problem with them? Uh, no, the person that I bought them for actually passed away. Well, what, if you, what do you do if you're on the other line? This is, okay, no problem. So they, they arranged to have the shoes come and, and be picked up, which is great in and of itself. Don't even worry about it, just put them on the front. Um, so this person, this customer left for a few hours and then when they were driving back, you know what they saw leaving their house? It wasn't a delivery truck, it was something else. It was a delivery truck, but flowers. They sent flowers to that customer. How much time did that take? And how much did that cost? The story made national news and to run a, a story like that and to get that kind of national attention probably paid itself over and over and over again. Right? Can you make a difference? Can you delight a customer? Can you really be an influence in someone else's life? No question. And it's small things that make the biggest difference. So I love this. I actually didn't even catch the person at our office doing this. I wish that I would have, but I, there's another, see, I wish that I would have. But I'm glad I did find them on Twitter uh, through one of, our, one of the tweets. So one of our customers, is, as they called in, they found out that they weren't feeling very well. So we have a phenomenal artist well, multiple artists at our company. And she took the time to make this little handmade card. And I'll just tell you this, there's something really unique and really awesome about receiving a handwritten card today. Why? Think back to that slide, we all live in a digital world. I love getting messages and emails and things like that, but a handwritten card shows what? You, you took the time, you cared, I think it was the other thing that I, you really are interested, and that's delighting people. Right, and going above and beyond and making someone feel genuinely special. So I want to talk as, as it relates to that. Okay, how do you get people to do that? Well, it's innately baked into your culture. And I think your culture is critical for how you create rules as you're getting ready to start your business. A standard operating procedure of how we respond and how we take care of our customers. Jeff Bezos, back to Amazon, what I love about what he does is he starts with the customer and then works backwards as long as the customer is taken care of. So these, these are just a few ideas that I have around the, uh, building the right culture. You have to have the right team. I remember when we first started, we had great people that we wanted to work with, and we knew what their strengths and abilities were, and so we said, I know what you can do, go and do it. I know what you can do, go and do it, and then we'd come back and we'd collaborate as a team. Because we had that, we were able to accomplish a lot in a relatively short order. So the right team. You have to have the right vision. People have to buy in and understand this is what we're doing, this is why we're doing it. And is it so amazing? I worked for an early dot com company, ended up being successful during the whole bubble burst. Why? A lot of people work there, you ready for this? A lot of people work there for free for a little while. What? Why? To gain experience, yes. But we had the most extraordinary team there, and it was a remarkable experience to be able to work together with a team that you trust, you have confidence in, and really, the end, I'll, show, I'll show one more quote at the end of the, of the time, but you have to have the ability to execute, and you have to be accountable to one another, making sure, you know what, this is what we're going to do, this is why we're going to do it, these are the team members that are, are going to do it, and we're going to make it happen. You're going to make it happen. I'm going to make it happen. The ability to execute, and finally, of course, you have to be well capitalized, both people and cash. But I love this quote. Chester Elton, who's the author of The 24 Karat Manager, says, gone are the days when people stay at a company because they love their organizations. Today, great people stay because they love the people that they work for. One of the things that I love 
uh, looking forward to as I go into work is the people that I have the opportunity to work with and the customers we have the opportunity to work with. I love going out and meeting with our customers and talking with them face to face and understanding what are their challenges. Now in this mobile marketing world in which we live, as we just saw, how do we do that? And how do we make sure that we're engaging with customers? Well, there's, there's so many great stories that I could share. Anyone know Gary Vaynerchuk? Great, great author, um, incredible speaker, social media guru. He was just on the cover of a, a famous biz business magazine. He told a story at the Inc. conference a couple of years ago uh, where one of his customers called in and, and ordered uh, a large, uh, placed a large order with them. He found this person on social media, found out that they were a huge sports fan of a hockey team, bought him a jersey, sent it to him. What did that customer do? If you're ever going to order anywhere, where are they going to tell you to go? Can you see that? Small thing, huge dividends. But it's hard to do, just like setting New Year's resolutions. So it's just a matter of today, tying this all in full circle. You can make a difference today. You just have to make up your mind to do it. So you have to have vision and values, as we talked about. I love, these were some of the visions that, vision and values that we laid out for each of our, uh, for all of our employees. Number one, the internet is awesome. Why is the internet awesome? Because it provides an opportunity for all of us. And the internet is incredible. Think about that video we just watched a minute ago, how we're all connected. We're all connected. Soda's thicker than water. What does that mean? Well, we're always honest and we're available to our orange soda family. <laughs> uh, that's why we put the sacred cow to pasture, because we're soda people. Right? It's not getting caught up in, in politics and things that are unimportant. It's being real and transparent. So soda's thicker than water. Refreshing service. We talked a little bit about that and what that means in delivering service. These are some of the values that I think you should consider as you're getting ready to start a business. Make sure that, you know what, we are going to flat out execute on taking care of our customers. Remembering the ping pong has nothing to do with ping pong, but it has to do with this. Even as we grow, we remember that it all started with a few well-meaning folks, a bottle of soda and an idea. So while we're dead serious about search engine marketing, for everything else, there's ping pong, Superman, action figures, posters, Halloween, lava lamps, and egg cookers. We have a ton of fun at Halloween. In fact, I was on, uh, I was on the news recently and <laughs> The interviewer asked me, he said, hey, you got big plans for Halloween? I said, absolutely. So I actually invited him down. He wasn't able to make it, but it's crazy what we do at Halloween. It's a lot of fun. We do like the color orange, too. So I think that's one of the reasons that we, we have such a great time there. Uh, the other thing is owning it. I had an incredible experience. I won't name any names here, but my cell phone car carrier, I went in to upgrade my phone. And when I walked in, the line was really long. And I was like, oh, man, I don't have a ton of time. So I'll just walk over here. And I asked them when they're like, oh, you need to go and take a number from this lady. And that's kind of how they source people out. And so I walk, over to the, I walk over to this lady. I get a number. I'm like, oh, sweet. This is great. I haven't had a number for how long? And I sit there. And I'm like, I don't know who I'm going to get, right? And finally, I get contacted by this other guy. Because, hey, hey, can I help you? Sorry for the wait. We sit down. I notice that he's the manager of the store. This is great. I start grilling him with questions. And he's able, he has a response for every single question. This is, this is awesome. I keep asking him more questions. He still has answers. And as I'm sitting down, all the other reps, the people who got the other unlucky numbers, we'll say, are dealing with other people. They, they keep, hey, can you help me with this? Right? He's answering other questions for him. So who am I dealing with? I'm dealing with an expert. Isn't it interesting when you're dealing with an expert and you know you're talking to an expert? You can uncover and cover a lot more ground. Finally, owning it. This is about having the integrity to own our responsibilities, confront mistakes, make changes, and always strive to be better the next time. So there's only one orange soda, a unique blend of industry knowledge, products, and personnel. Our level of expertise, dedication, and service stands alone when we get the work done. So this was a lot of fun. You can kind of see the culture. So as we had customers come in uh, to see us, or large partners, a lot of big companies would come in and they say, wow, this is different. This feels different here. Why? Because we loved who we worked with, we trusted one another, we enjoyed what we did, and had a great time doing it. And we were accountable to one another. So this is what I wanted to share with you as it's 11, 12, 13. So it's the month of November. 
um, I thought, what a unique and, and uh, awesome opportunity. Talk about things that we should be grateful for and are grateful for. As I mentioned, hats off to all of you for being, in, being here and attending UVU. Great school, great university. We have so many inc uh, extraordinary professors that are here and in the Valley and people to learn from. And that's why I say learn as though you have to teach the lesson and you'll have a great experience. It's up to you to have a great learning experience, really. And no, UVU is not paying me to say any of this. <laughs> so be grateful. I wanted to share, has anyone seen this video by Louis Schwartzberg? I want to share, share a little video. This, this video is frankly extraordinary and encapsulates, and I wanted to share it based on what we talked about today. Can you make a difference? Can I make a difference? Who doesn't want that? <laughs> Isn't it remarkable learning from kids? So we just talked about how they are entrepreneurs in their own mind. So many places all over the world, from 
goes together, meets you here, like a life-giving water if you only open your heart and drink. Open your heart to the incredible gifts that civilization gives to us. You flip the switch and there is electric light. Turn a faucet and there's warm water and cold water and drinkable water. It's a gift that millions and millions in the world uh, will never experience. So these are just a few of an enormous number of gifts to which we can open your heart. And so I wish you that you would open your heart with all these blessings. Let them flow through you, that everyone you will meet on this day will be blessed by you. Just by your eyes, by your smile, by your touch, just by your presence. Let the gratefulness overflow into blessing all around you. And then it would really be a good day. Tell you what, that's tough to follow. <clears throat> and I thought about that as I put that in. <clears throat> But there's something amazing that happens when we're grateful and when we appreciate what we have. Do you know who's been on my mind for the last probably 72 hours? Is the people in the Philippines, right? And the challenges that they're facing right now. We're so blessed, we have so much. So I hope that as you think about all the blessings that you have, be grateful. And remember on 11, 12, 13 was the day that you made the decision to be grateful every day. Don't wait until the new year to do it. Don't wait until the first part of December. But be grateful today. Here are three big ideas that I have, again, in parting. I told you there was, there was going to be sequences of threes, right? So I prepared you ahead of time. The first one, learning. As I said and as started out the, the lecture, great job for being here. Continue to learn. Life is learning. You never arrive. One question that I got uh, and continue to get is, hey, do you feel like you know, you've, you've achieved this level of success or whatever that you've arrived? I don't think you ever arrive. One of my favorite things to do here specifically in Utah is to climb these, these beautiful mountains along the Wasatch Front. Has anyone ever climbed Mount Timonogos? Isn't that awesome? Just like entrepreneurship, and I share this over and over, you stand down here and you can see the entire mountain. And it's spectacular. And that's the opportunity. But then you know what? You're like, oh, it's pretty easy to get to the top, right? Then you start up the trail, and guess what? It is a lot harder <laughs> than it looks from standing down here. Isn't that true? But what happens is a lot of people start up the trail, and they'll have people, you know, you're not prepared. You, you don't have that. Make sure that you are prepared as you're going up. That's why I mentioned outlining those critical things to have as you're heading on a mountain. Um, but take a second to look around at the beauty and not just the hiking a mountain and what it is, because life is tough. I get it. Entrepreneurship is tough. I could spend the whole time just talking about some of the failures that we've had. But it's through those challenges that you learn. And when you get to the top, you get to the top of a mountain, you're like, this is awesome. Have you arrived? No, you have to walk back down. And then there's other peaks that you want to go and accomplish. Right? So learning. Continue to learn. Do. I think Nike's slogan is one of the best that has ever come about in just doing it because that's that's the difference i give them credit for that but learning doing and then finally sharing when you have great experiences the world needs more of the video we just watched and thank you louie thanks for putting that together to bless all of our lives especially this month it's awesome he shared that i'm able to share that with you because of his his generosity and putting that on youtube <laughs> so finally i love this from seth godin He's a remarkable uh, author, and in fact, if you don't follow him, uh, I would highly recommend going and visiting his blog. He's very thoughtful, 
he's an extraordinary uh, thinker and makes, all of, makes me think, especially on a daily basis. So go make something happen. With that, this is the end. And I think we got time for Q&A. Thank you.